Okay, so we have a few Canucks things to go over in this video. Let's talk about Vasily Podkolzin, let's talk about Elias Pettersson, let's talk about Travis Hamanick, and let's talk about the Lions heading into tonight's home opener against the Wild. Now, I will say this right off the bat, just to get it out of the way right here, I do have hockey practice at 7.30 today. And that entire thing that's going to go on, yeah, I know, I signed up for floor hockey again, and we've got a thing later tonight. But the thing is, a lot of the folks that are going to be going over to practice actually had to cancel because they ended up using their student rush discounts to get tickets to the game in the lower bowl for about 50 bucks tonight. I don't blame them. It's definitely a great deal. I am personally quite envious because I'm no longer at school. I graduated BCIT Radio a year ago, which is kind of why I'm doing YouTube full-time now. So, we have ourselves a little bit of a conundrum where I don't even really know if practice is going to go on the right way today because most people are going to be at the Canucks game. We're not allowed to just cancel practice through and through. And now there's only like a very small amount of people that are actually scheduled to go to practice and I am one of them. I don't want to be that guy that ends up bailing and ends up leaving everybody else in the dust just to go home and watch a Canucks game in solitude. But... I don't know. It is what it is. We'll see what happens as the night goes on. So long story short, I might not actually be able to watch tonight's Canucks game unless somebody brings an iPad or something to practice and does like the Shaw Go thing or whatever. But we have ourselves some more things to discuss with the team that are not really related to tonight's game against Minnesota, but do have some bigger implications towards the home opener and deployment in general. So as I said, let's talk today about Travis Hamanick. This was a tweet that was posted by Jeff Patterson the other day that got a lot of people kind of freaking out in a very positive way. Matt Zakaris was reporting that the Vancouver Canucks defenseman Travis Hamanick is in town, or that he will be on his way shortly with the intention of resuming his NHL career. He may require a stint in Abbotsford first to get up to speed. Now, I know Matt Zakaris has a reputation in this city for kind of giving out takes that don't usually happen, but this is one of those times when he reports something and I'm like, wow, that's a really good thing. Like, if this is true, which I want to believe it is, this would actually be super beneficial for the Vancouver Canucks. Now, I know a lot of people are going to bring up, okay, salary cap. He's got X amount of dollars on the books. He's going to be taken off the LTIR and activated again. What does that do for the Canucks cap situation? Well... If you take a look at everything on Cap Friendly, it says the Canucks currently have $2.7 million of cap space today. Now, that's not their projected cap space number. This is with, with the LTIR money incorporated as well. So, from the looks of it, if Travis Hamanick were to be activated, it would appear that his $3 million would come onto the books and the Canucks would be about, what, $300,000 over the salary cap. Now, I'm not really too sure how exactly they're going to maneuver around that, but if I had to guess, a guy like Kyle Burrows, for example, who is also a right-handed defenseman on this team, he's making $750,000 in the NHL, and he's making four hundred dollars in the minors, so... Maybe there's a possibility that you have a Hamannick who is brought in, you bring down a Kyle Burrows, and the money barely gets itself sorted out there because you would be freeing up an extra $350,000 on your cap if you send down Burrows. Now, I don't know if that's exactly how it works, to be fair. Like, I'm just kind of reading the numbers here and taking a look at Cap Friendly. So if anybody smarter than me wants to go out there and correct me in the comments, then hey, feel free to do that for sure. But when it comes to Travis Hamannick, he's a guy that, honestly... This team has been pretty all right without. The guy that we mentioned, Cal Burrows, was actually a very solid right-handed defenseman option, and I thought he played pretty well in the small sample size he had with the Canucks so far. So, with Travis Hamannick coming back, what this means to me is that there are going to be options and there are going to be substitutions should this team need any. The Canucks have been fortunate so far throughout the six-game series to have not had too many severe injuries to defensemen just yet. Quinn Hughes sat out for one game, but that was about it. And the Vancouver Canucks, knowing their history with the injury bugs, they're likely to get somebody going down at some time in the next few weeks, because that's just how the hockey gods write our scripts. Whether it be Pullman or Myers or whatever, there would be an option here to have Burroughs as a depth guy and have Hamannick in the roster as well. So, 
hey, more options isn't a bad thing. The cap is kind of concerning in my opinion, but just from my understanding of the cap space situation, there should be some ways to maneuver around it. Again, if I'm incorrect about that, somebody please correct me in the comments. But when it comes to other players on the team, let's talk about Elias Pettersson because he did himself an interview on Sportsnet 650 today with Halford and Bruff, and he talked a lot about social media. It's actually kind of cool because we've known over the past year and a bit, pretty much, that when it comes to social media videos, Twitch streams, Instagram photos, and all that stuff, working with brands, hanging out with rappers, Elias Pettersson has been one of the prime guys on this team when it comes to doing that stuff. He was Twitch streaming himself, playing Scriblio with BB No Money a year ago, something like that. He was playing Call of Duty Warzone with Adam Gaudet. He was doing a whole bunch of stuff for his social media brand a while ago, and they talked about this on the radio where they asked him, hey, okay, what was the transition from doing this stuff and to also working on hockey and being this social media presence that you were trying to be? I'll leave a link in the description to the video on Twitter where they clip the response and post it as its own post. But Pedersen said, I was doing a lot before last season. A little too much focus on that and not on the right thing. I'm just being honest now with how I feel. I'm just focusing on hockey. Social media comes after. The entire response is a lot longer than that. This is a condensed quote, as noted by the dot dot dots that go after a few sentences. But Elias Pedersen pretty much just said in this interview, yeah, he kind of realized that he was a little bit too focused on the social media stuff, even though it was his free time, even though it was time away from the rink, you know, just quarantining and all that. He said himself that he is focusing a lot more on hockey today, which is different than how he was approaching things beforehand. And honestly, I gotta give a round of applause to the guy. Like, as a person who is also young, I was born in the year 2000, so I'm technically younger than Elias Pettersson, and who also has a social media platform built up. Sure, I'm not playing Twitch games with rappers from the Vancouver area. Sure, I'm not making millions of dollars, and sure, I don't live in a high-rise apartment downtown. But as somebody in the position that I'm in, which is in my bedroom making videos for a few thousand people every single day, it's easy to understand when you start to get carried away. When you start to think, okay, what things do I need to make a video about? What do I need to post about? What do I need to talk about? Because I have a brand and I am this person within the brand that people expect to hear things from. What do I have to do to serve that community? And for somebody like Elias Pettersson, sure, it's cool to think about that, but he's still a hockey player at the end of the day, and it's a really mature kind of response that he laid out over here when he said, yeah, I'm focusing more on hockey, I kind of realized I was focusing too much on social media. That's not really exactly verbatim what he said, I'm just kind of paraphrasing the motive, I think, behind it. So when it comes to EP40, I'm not really too sure if we're going to see too many Twitch streams with BB No Money anymore, but hey. If it leads to a better, more improved Pedersen on the ice, I think it would be a fantastic compensation. Speaking about Pedersen, though, let's take a look at the lines heading into tonight's lineup. This was the lineup at the morning skate, as Thomas Drant saw it, with no Dickinson or Dowling on the ice. He then updated that Dickinson was indeed there, but he appeared to be a bottom six extra, leaving practice on Monday with an undisclosed knock. So, the lines that we had that were at today's early morning skate, Pearson, Horvat, Garland, nothing to change there, very good line. Pod Colson, Miller, and Besser, okay, so looks like Vasily Pod Colson is back in the lineup. Highmore, EP40, Hoaglander, it's been really cool seeing Highmore and Hoggy doing their thing, and they've been working very hard, so it's going to be cool seeing Pedersen working alongside of those guys. Let's see if he can match that intensity from those two wingers. And then Justin Bailey, Yuho Lamico, and Alex Chason. So, no Jason Dickinson in this lineup that we had over here, as well as no Justin Dowling. Bailey and Pod Colson are the two guys who are in. And then on defense, OEL Myers, Hughes Pullman, Rathbone Burroughs, Hunt, and Shen, eight guys whom we've seen before. So this is appearing to be what we might see heading into tonight's game against the Wild. If we see Jason Dickinson heading into the lineup, I'm not really too sure who he replaces. If it's Lamico in the fourth line, is it Justin Bailey and they move things around? I'm not really too sure, but let me know in the comments what do you think about these lines over here, as well as the other stuff too. Elias Patterson, his social media presence, Travis Hamannick in the comments that he made, as well as what I should do. I really don't know if I'm going to be able to watch a good chunk of this game, aside from the intro, but... 
We'll see. I'm practicing at 7.30 until like 9 or something, so I should be able to catch the end of the game, assuming I get home on time. But talk to me in the comments. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this video. Troll is 9 And bye.